much of eastern Carolina during the day today, and we're going to keep those clouds tonight. And just like last night, there could be some areas of fog or even light freezing drizzle. So keep that in mind if you're driving during the overnight hours. Our low temperature tonight, 13 in Sioux Falls, 7 in Aberdeen, 13 in Pierre, and partly cloudy 22 in Rapid City. During the day tomorrow, partly cloudy skies after the fog leaves us, and we'll have near normal temperatures. That means 27 Sioux Falls, 26 Aberdeen, 34 in Pierre, a breezy 42 in Rapid City. Just a few degrees cooler on Sunday. We'll talk about that and have the rest of the forecast in just a couple of minutes. Kelloland News starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News first at four. Coming up, we have the latest details on a deadly officer-involved shooting in Rapid City as the DCI begins its investigation. Plus, we hear from Coach Stiglmeyer about his plans to retire as SDSU names the next head football coach. And later, you can get a taste of summer at the WH Line Fairgrounds this weekend as the outdoor show gets underway. Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning into First at Four. I'm Kelly Volk. And I'm Don Jorgensen. Developing this afternoon, authorities have arrested seven people in a Sioux Falls drug bus. This afternoon in court, a prosecutor said two of the suspects, Bradman Alexander and Mackenzie Zimmerman, are believed to be the biggest meth and fentanyl dealers in Sioux Falls. Others arrested include Jennifer Gatter, Brian Gillette, Daniel Jensen, Michael Lagg, and Shang Williams. Kelloland News is digging through the court documents, and we'll have more on this story both on air and online. The South Dakota Attorney General and Division of Criminal Investigations are now looking into yesterday's deadly officer-involved shooting in Rapid City. Officers were in the area of Surfwood Drive and Maple Street when police chased after a man. Investigators say the man pulled out a gun. That's when an officer shot and killed him. Officials have not released the name of the person killed. The DCI will process the crime scene, interview officers and witnesses, and review body cameras and surveillance videos. The release of the summary is expected within 30 days. Federal investigators are looking into several cases of alleged child labor trafficking at Nebraska and Minnesota slaughterhouses. Authorities say that they found 50 children working illegally. Call to Freedom in Sioux Falls says that they had 21 labor trafficking referrals last year, six of them where the victims were under the age of 17. Human trafficking, if it stays hidden within our communities, it's, it's what individuals that are facilitating this business want. They don't want us to understand how labor and sex trafficking works. So if it goes unnoticed, um, victims don't really self-identify in these situations. A lot of times victims don't know they're victims of human trafficking. You're going to hear more from the director of Call to Freedom coming up tonight at 6. An animal rescue group in Des Moines has taken in two dogs that were found living in filth with no food or water. Last week, the Des Moines Police Department found Lexi and Blue shut up in wire crates. Both dogs were underweight and living in their own waste. 38 year old Eric Lavern Hill is charged with animal neglect. Court documents say Hill had a third dog named Dynasty. She died at an emergency vet center. The Animal Rescue League of Iowa is asking for donations to help Blue and Lexi on their way to recovery. All right, let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Megan Chad. It sounds like we might be dealing with some fog again tonight. Unfortunately, even some freezing drizzle making roadways very slick. Right now in Sioux Falls, only thick clouds and 26 degrees. Winds are light though this afternoon. Aberdeen is dealing with those thicker clouds and even some patchy fog right now at 26. And in Pierre, they're finally getting a break from some of the clouds, maybe even a little bit of sunshine. 26 this afternoon, just very light winds. Rapid City though, sunshine and 38 right now. Temperatures this afternoon are very close to normal. We have 20s in eastern Kelloland, 30s, even 40s the farther west we go. For tonight, mostly cloudy skies. Areas could see fog or freezing drizzle in eastern Kelloland, 13 in Sioux Falls, 7 in Aberdeen, 13 in Pier, and 22 in Rapid City. For the day tomorrow, we'll have partly cloudy skies, but temperatures will be much like today. 27 in Sioux Falls, 26 in Aberdeen, 34 in Pier, and 42 but breezy in Rapid City. 
And then on Sunday, slightly cooler with more clouds across eastern Kelloland. 22 for Sioux Falls, 21 in Aberdeen, 34 in Pier, and 42 in Rapid City. We'll have a look of next week's forecast in just a little bit. Thanks a lot, Megan. Snow plows in Sioux Falls are just about finished clearing residential streets following the snowstorm earlier this week. Here's a live look at the snow alert tracker map. Everything in green means plowing is complete. The streets shaded in red have not been started yet. The city says there will be downtown parking restrictions in effect tonight and into Saturday morning. Pothole crews will also be out repairing the roads this weekend. Well, this week's snow and ice are still impacting power lines across North Dakota, leaving hundreds of people without power. Crews say that the majority of the outages have been caused by the weight of ice buildup, which then pulls down the lines and poles. The emerald ash borer has made its way into parts of western Iowa, including Sioux City. The insect was first detected in Iowa in 2010 and has since slowly encroached into nearly all of the state's 99 counties. It's been nearly five years since emerald ash borer was found in northern Sioux Falls. Signs of an infestation include canopy thinning, leafy sprouts shooting from the trunk or main branches, bark splitting, and woodpecker damage. Well, it is the issue that has many people talking, the rising cost of eggs. Some people are now turning to owning their own chickens to offset the cost. Esther's Acres in North Dakota says that their flock hasn't been hit by the avian flu. Currently, there are about 25 chickens on the farm. The owners say that it's a benefit to be able to go outside and get eggs for free rather than pay the high price that we're currently seeing. It's, it's nice knowing that we can just go into the backyard and grab, and grab some eggs and, and share with our neighborhood, too. That's really special. Send some my way. Yeah. yeah I've, well, in the summer, the farm will be running a community-supported agricultural program, which lets people sign up to buy eggs, poultry, and produce every two weeks. North Dakota lawmakers are looking at a sweeping reform, which would declare an old-time sport part of the state's culture. A new bill would declare curling as North Dakota's official sport. The wintertime sport is played all over the state with clubs of active members of all ages. The bill was brought forward to the Senate floor yesterday. All right. You're from North Dakota. I knew you were going to ask have this. Have you ever curled before? I have not. I have not either, but it looks like it'd be fun. My wife and I like watching it during the Olympics. Yeah. It's one of our favorite yeah, sports. Yeah, looks. I know how to ice skate. Does well, that give should, me any should, credibility? Yeah, you should be able to do it. All right. Maybe we should get on a curling team together here in Sioux Falls. Oh, we might come to work with broken bones. <laughs> well, I've had one of those already. All right, coming up after the break, thousands of people are taking to the streets of Washington, D.C. for the first March for Life since Roe v. Wade was overturned. Plus, we look at the abortion rights bill that is making its way through the legislature in Minnesota. You're watching First at Four on Kelloland News.